War had raged through all Aventasia. The alliance of humans, elves, and dwarves fought against the evil army of the Shadows. The war had devastated the country for years upon years, and yet, no one gained the advantage. And so it was that in that time of deepest despair, that an old archaeologist uncovered the location of the artifact of the Divine Eight. The artifact could fulfill every wish, and thus decide the war for one side or the other. Led by warlock Monkus, son of Archwitch Mortroga, the shadows hunted for the artifact. And they would have reached it first, were it not for a group of heroes who stood against them. Wilbur, the young gnome who was the first of his clan to become a mage. Ivo, the courageous elven princess from the Woodland Realm. And the Critter, a hairy creature from the Northlands, companion of the most brilliant of the heroes, Nate Bonnet, who was supposed to spend the rest of his life at the side of an elven princess, who deserved a kingdom and all the riches in the world, who should stop wasting time talking about himself in the third person. Good, good, this is good. Although the ground is still getting closer. Part of the jetty. At least some of it survived the explosion. If I'm lucky, this will go all the way up to the island. <laughs> but somehow I really doubt it will. Good, for now. Could it be that your spell didn't quite work out the way you planned? I did tell you there were certain risks involved. I could use some help here, Benny. Well, you did see what happened last time I cast a spell. Time to make up for it then. Now shake a leg. Oh, I don't know. I might just end up making everything worse. Excuse me, I'm sorry for the disturbance. Don't know what came over me. I'll be fine on my own. Oh, really? No, Benny, not really. Not even close. Ah, <laughs> humor. <laughs> Funny. Can't you just stop time? Or wings! Give me wings! How about that? Oh, this is all terribly complicated. I really don't feel up to it today, Nate. Benny! Perhaps tomorrow? I really do need to think through what's happened today, properly. You get me out of the mess you got us into right now! Please don't yell at me! I just can't take it anymore! Benny! Ah! The state he's in, we can forget about miracles. I gotta find something easy, something even he thinks he can do.
a flying carpet. Is that too much to ask? I'm not talking to you. Why, you... Uh, I'm sorry I criticized your work, Benny. And? And? And that I shook your lamp. And everything else. You meant... Well... Well, all right, then. I forgive you. What can I do for you? Carpet! Mmm, a flying carpet. Mm. Shouldn't be too hard. Should I really dare? Am I really up to it? Yes! What the heck? What happened here? No! Welcome, adventurer. I am the tutorial, guardian of gameplay, explainer of controls. Use the left stick to move the character. Well done. If you walk up to an object, context-sensitive actions will be displayed. Walk up to that big lever and press A. The robot has used the lever as this seemed logical to him. Now press B so that the robot looks at the lever rather than uses it. Excellent. The robot thinks the lever is working. But if that's so, then where is the problem? That hatch over there, walk up to it and press A. Little chap seems to think there are advanced engine mechanics hidden behind there. Perhaps that's where the problem is. Press A again, next to the hatch. The first time you press A will allow you to look, the second to use. Why? Because after a player character has looked at something, the most logical thing to do next is use it. It's quite simple. Press B when you want to look at something. Press A in order to do whatever that character thinks is the next most sensible move. Is the machine working again? Walk up to the lever and press A. Appears to be a new problem. Better take a closer look at the engine. Oops, that wasn't very helpful. Please pick up both gears by pressing A. If you can reach several objects from one position, you can use the right stick to select the one you want to interact with.
great work. Items you pick up will go into your inventory. You open and close your inventory by pressing Y. To use an inventory item, select it with A, and then select the object that you want it to be used with. Use one of the gears in your inventory with the engine of the town model. Excellent. How about dealing with the second gear? Perfect. You'd better oil the engine before you switch the machine back on again. That should do it. Time to crank it up. Examine objects in the inventory in more detail. Pick up the damaged figure and the toolbox. Then open the inventory with Y and press B in order to examine the toolbox. Great! You found a few items in the toolbox. You can use these items on each other by initially selecting the first object with A and then using it on the second object again with A. Try to repair the figure in the inventory. Well done! Now place the figure back in its rightful place on the balcony of the castle and start the machine. about you oh mother what's wrong with you everything's fine no you don't look well at all positively rotund it is unseemly for an elf princess to cope with her frustrations by comfort eating. If you carry on like this, you won't fit into your wedding dress. I don't have any intentions of marrying any time soon. Oh, darling, we've been through that already. Prince Lalilos is going to be arriving next week. You will like him. He's charming and... Look, he sent us a picture of himself and his sister. Um, which of the two is the sister? The elf nobility, unfortunately, has not got any unshaven Neanderthals to offer. You'll just have to get used to that. 
I don't have the slightest interest in that person. Not anymore. You are at the heart of the Elf Kingdom, in the castle of your family where you belong. No one here should be sad, tired, or fat. I only want what's best for you, Ivor. She's locked me in! Yes, only what's best for me. She always says that. Have you seen this prince? A vain river elf who's only interested in topping up his tan. I'm to spend hundreds of years in the company of someone I don't love. Huh, not me. And how? She will try anything and everything. Nothing's more important to her than getting me married off. Ugh. When I was out there with the humans, it was the first time that I had the feeling I could determine my own destiny. Yes, it was dangerous. Doesn't that go with the territory? A life without risk, that is so... so... Oh, you don't understand. If I could, I would go right now. You want to stop me? <laughs> Just like last time. I didn't want to tell Mother, but I've not been feeling too well lately, Cheap. I'd say the same thing, but we elves hardly ever get ill. Yeah, you've got a point there. I spent almost a year in the human world and they have some very strange ideas about personal hygiene. Well, I thought... perhaps it's a curse. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take care of it myself. Mother would make a state occasion out of it. I don't know either, but I'm sure there's a medical book down in the library. No, rest is not what I need just now. I'll go down to the library and look up what's wrong with me, completely alone, just like a grown-up elf. I'm not going to be stopped, neither by locked doors nor by you. The times when the others were here in the elf burrow, those were the best that I've ever had. The critter could never keep still when I was drawing him. He was always pulling faces and trying to make me laugh. Wilbur was so excited. He loves elves and our stories. He spent hours sitting with my father and listening to him talk about bygone ages. Complete idiot. We have many exotic plants here in the palace, but some flowers are my favourite. Apologies, I need a few of your seeds. Cheep, would it be possible for you to stop admiring yourself for two seconds and move over to stuffing your beak instead?
Don't say I never look after you. I had my birthday during the few weeks that we spent living together here in the Elf Burrow. That was a big deal for Wilbur. He couldn't understand that the significance of birthdays tends to fade after a few hundred years. He insisted on making me a present. He sat in the corner for days knitting me this hat with his little gnarled fingers. symptoms. I just need the music box a minute. You don't need to turn your head away from your beautiful reflection for one second. Come on. to sleep. It got dark and he's simply... no matter. I can now enjoy a few moments of peace. I'm going to have to take a few more of your seeds, but I promise this is the last time. Let's go. expected. No one here. My parents are in the throne room ruling the lands. Or rather, mother is. There were reeds and water lilies growing in the pond. Naturally, they were planted there. They don't grow in the wild so high up the mountains. I can't think of any use for a water lily, but a reed could come in handy. A fairly small, unattractive tree. Huh. I'd like to see how attractive you'd look if someone disturbed you on the pot in the morning. You mean... Anyway, what could I do for you, my little beauty? The garden always looks fantastic, Arbor. Thank you. It's a girt load of work. People always think elf gardens are fabulous by their very nature. But you need a mighty good gardener. You have got green fingers. Ah, that's just moss, me dear. Happens if you spend all day grubbing around in the earth and don't wash your hands properly in the evenings. You tree shepherds do a great job. <laughs> tree shepherds? The trees just stand there. What do they need a shepherd? However, I quite fancy one of those shepherd dogs. Hey, Rex, do you want to be my shepherd dog? <laughs> nah, my darling. I'm a gardener. Nothing more, nothing less. Mother put me on a diet this morning so that I'll look perfect for my wedding. Oh, everything has to be perfect for her. No such thing in nature, of course. Or rather, everything is perfect if you just let nature run its course. You tell that to Mother. 
I have, many times. She'd be very clever in some things, but very daft concerning that. Now then, she is the Queen. I'm old enough to be able to call a spade a spade. <laughs> spade, gardener, get it? What are you up to today then? Got much on? Oh, the usual. You know, it never rains in the Elfborough, but the flowers need their water, so I water them every day. Ah, oh, the curse of good weather. <laughs> the weather isn't the only thing which isn't right. We've been here 30 years, and for 30 years we've had autumn. Time passes differently in the Elfborough. Slower. Well, that's why everyone grows to be ancient here, obviously. But if we had a bit of normal weather in the usual seasons, oh, there'd be a lot more of a riot the year. You and Father, you get along well, don't you? Ah, no one understands more about nature than him, that's for sure. But I don't often ask him for help. Thinking has never got a field dug, if you get my drift. He's just more of a theorist. Ah, the mud on your feet, the smell of fresh earth, all that joy and life. He's missing out on the lot by just sitting around up there and doing nubbit. I have to get on. Yep, got a bit to do myself. I just don't know what's wrong with that plant over there. Your mother got a whole heap of flowers given to her the other day from a fairy delegation. All of them took good and strong, just not that one. Perhaps it needs a special type of soil or something. Well, anything's possible. If I don't think of something soon, I'll have to ask your father. He can have a little chat with her and she might tell him what's up. Um, if you're going in, it'd be nice if you didn't tell my mother that you saw me out here. Oh, you playing hooky again? My lips are sealed. A handy smooth stone, Arbor's sheep dog. Arbor's pot, literally. The earth looks dark and rich with worms squirming around in it. Presumably it's the best earth in the garden. The earth looks dark and rich. Biggest Plant Book of Avantasia by Charles Mendel with illustrations by Alexander Bonpland. A standard reference book that Arbor always used to consult every now and then. However, he insists that he now knows it off by heart. Perhaps I can help Arbor solve the problem with that flower. Let's take a look. Hmm, this plant reminds me of the one that Arbor's having problems with at the moment. Love Lily. The Love Lily enters into an enduring relationship with another plant very early in its life, which frequently lasts its lifetime. If the partner plant dies, then the Love Lily does not normally survive the separation. Several books about animals, an atlas, a book about humans, actually, more of a brochure. And what's this? Fishing for the moderately talented. Hmm. I haven't really got the time to sit and read a book, and if I had, it would definitely not be one about fishing. There must be a medical book for elves here somewhere. Goldsmithing, masonry, and a book about carpentry. Like all books in this library, it's a guest present. The logic behind this must be, 
Those elves, they have so many beautiful statues and items of wood. They'll be really interested in this. Why don't we present them with a book about it? What they don't realise, though, is that if we're interested in a subject, then we'll already know pretty much all there is to know about the matter, and the book's of no use to us whatsoever. Hmm, working with wood. There's a master whittler down in the valley. I've enjoyed watching him in the past. He carves animal figures so real that humans and dwarfs believe that they are actually animals turned into wood. This one's more about interiors, making furniture and the like. Plane the wood down by a pixie's thumb and saw the board into two equal length pieces. Hmm, who knows what that might be good for. What have we got here then? Aha! Ah, Almanac of Elf Medicine. That's what I've been looking for. Ow! Be careful, if you please. A speaking book? An ill elf? Ill elf? So I look ill? What's wrong with me? Take it easy, young one, one thing at a time. Young one, I'm older than you. And you look it, too. I do? No, of course not, and I can also see no illness. But the mere fact that I've been fished out from the back of the shelf for the first time in centuries tells me that something is wrong. I haven't been feeling too well recently. I'm sleeping badly and have no appetite. I know that elves are very seldom ill, but if it's not that, then it must be some kind of magic or curse. Mm, seldom ill does not actually mean never ill. Elves can, for instance, suffer from a broken heart. Oh, please. It is one of the most common causes of death amongst beautiful princesses. Oh, it must be something else. Sensitive elves can sometimes suffer from the pains of the world. There are a variety of ear infections, and of course it could also be lupus. Hmm. But I think it is something else. Like what? To be completely certain, you must mix a potion and drink it. Are you serious? Very. Are you actually qualified to make a diagnosis? And why can you talk? I am a magical medicine book. That actually serves as an answer to both of your questions. I've never encountered a talking book before. Of course not. I am the only talking book here. That's the problem. In the magical library in Seastone, all books can talk. Things really get cooking there, believe me. You were probably given to us by someone from Seastone, right? Right. I was a complete idiot and actually volunteered. As I am a book about elf medicine, I didn't get much to do in Seastone. I thought to myself, hey, this is your chance to get some practical experience. Wrong. Yeah, we elves don't get ill much. And more than that, you don't actually have much time for books. This is the centre of the elven kingdom. And just look at how paltry this library is. We don't have much use for books. We sing songs about times past and many of us were there at the time. Then that's probably also the reason why so many elves stand around in white. What do you mean? Allow me to elucidate. Over the years, the songs you elves sing will be changed and adapted. A little here, a little there. This editorial process is nothing more than refined elvish propaganda, presenting them as intelligent and morally impeccable. And who can prove otherwise? There are no other witnesses and there are no books. I demand to know this instant what sort of illness I have. Sometimes it's better not to know. I can take it. A placebo only works when one doesn't know that it is a placebo. Make the potion and then come back and drink it. Then we'll be sure. And if it's lupus? 
Have you been bitten by a wolf of late? No. Then it can't be lupus. No, I'm pretty sure it's something else. Now, that potion, drink it, and then I can tell you more. All right, this potion. What... Together, the green fruit of a metis bush, a spoonful of honey and a red herring, and then mix with water into a viscous potion. Oh, that sounds revolting. It's medicine. It isn't supposed to taste nice. And if I drink it, I'll be well again? We will then at least know what is wrong with you. This metis bush, where can I find one? Haven't a clue. I'm just a book and have spent years sandwiched between dusty hymnals and a tome of revolting recipes. A red herring? Are you serious? Of course, why not? Red herrings are known all over the land as particularly useful fish. Their uses in the areas of medicine, cuisine and literature are too numerous to mention. All right, so I've got a red herring. Thank you. I think that's all for now. Normally, it's me that ends patient consultations. You are only a princess, but I, I am a doctor. This flower clearly is one of the more exotic of the palace's flowers. It comes from a country in the deep south beyond the deserts. It's said that the flower of this plant used to be sent as a declaration of war, or if one wanted to deprive someone of all sense. Why do so many people hate this flower? Perhaps it has an abhorrent smell. Now that explains why this flower is classified as a weapon in 24 countries. I really shouldn't... Ugh, it's only Earth. I should tell Mother how her daughter... Uh, well, she'd be delighted. Hi, Arba. Oh, Ivo! If I were ill and needed to make some medicine, then you'd help me with that, wouldn't you? Ill? You're an elf! Elves don't get ill! But if I were... <sighs> oh, come on. Now tell me. How can I help you? I often see you fishing. Could you lend me your rod? Of course. If you bring it back in one piece. What's up? I was convinced that I would have to make my own fishing rod or that you'd ask me to collect a variety of mystical items in exchange for it. Why? It's only a rod. Thanks. Not well, everything needs to be complicated, you know. Do we have a metis bush in the garden here? Or oh, that bush over yonder. But that fruit's red. And what colour do you expect, then? Green? Are they only green when they're not ripe? Nah, they're blue then. They're green when the bush senses danger. Pardon? The Meta's bush has exceptionally delicious sweet fruit. 
But if it thinks it's in danger, then they go green and very sour. Call it a defense mechanism. Ah, and the bush only has red fruit because it has nothing to be afraid of here. Ah, that's right. Do you know how I could get my hands on some honey? Troy the kitchens? I prefer not to wander through the castle. Ah, of course. Someone would tell your mother. Would that beehive in the tree over there be of any help? Oh, I'd be careful with that. The bees defend their honey and can give you a nasty sting. Couldn't they be distracted or tricked in some way? Beekeepers wear protective clothes and use smoke that calms the bees. But I don't have any beekeeper kit here. I just let the bees keep their honey and they pollinate my flowers. That's how we've always done it. There's something else. I think I know the name of your patient. It's a love lily. No, oh, you don't look particularly loved up. That's exactly the problem. Love lilies enter into a lifelong partnership with another plant. And if they're separated... Then they let their heads droop. Good theory. But the fairies know their plants. They'd never have given us a love lily without its partner. Hmm. Huh. See you later, Arthur. See ya! If the bush had a heart, it would have skipped a few beats. Thanks. I don't have a clue about fishing, but I'll try my luck. the feeling that I now know what I'm doing. I guess that I can just practice until I'm good enough. Or I could try to speed things up by learning more about fishing elsewhere. A classic. Pretty. herring off my list.
This flower was given to us by the fairies, just like the love lily down in the garden. I bet they belong together. Since Nate left without saying so much as a word, Mother seized the opportunity to marry me off to a proper elf prince. So far, I've managed to frighten off every candidate successfully. But she's starting to lose her patience. Hmm, these earrings here. They're sparkling and glinting in the sunshine. They could actually come in handy. Do you know this flower? Ha ha ha! You did well, girl. It would appear so. You snivelling girl? You all right? Um, no. Yes. I don't know. Well then, I think I've earned myself a little rest now. The smoke from Arbor's pipe seems to be calming the bees. This is my chance. Hey now, you all right there? Um, sorry, had to do it. Well, I'm not happy about this destruction of nature. Not unless I get half of that there honey. I don't need any more. The rest is for you. Oh, that be good stuff. But that's enough. The bees need a bit too. Water's the easiest ingredient to find. We have copious amounts of it here. That should do it. The medicine book reckoned that it should be a viscous potion. Oh, that fruit smells really sour. Thanks for the sacrifice, little fish. About one spoon of honey. Hmm. 
I'm pretty sure that there's never been anything so utterly revolting concocted in the elf burrow ever. Oh, I hope this is some kind of joke. Perhaps I have enough knowledge to now understand the book. Mm-hmm, 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 right, right, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Aha, oh, twice in a row, then, mm-hmm, mm. Mm, that was educational. I don't know much, but I do know that I'm not going to drink this potion until I've had another chat to the medicine book about it. I need to know which disease this potion's meant to be good for. Looks as if it's been pre-digested several times. Hi. Well, what's up? The potion's ready, but you don't seriously expect me to drink it, do you? You must. Cheap, I'm so... Yes, I know, but... This, um, <clears throat> medicine. Well, I did tell you that I wasn't feeling well, and the medicine book here thinks it could be something serious. She has to drink it, the sour metus fruit, sweet honey and salty fish. That should give us an answer. Oh, it looks revolting. It is medicine. It's not supposed to taste nice. That's right. Down to the last drop. Hmm. Not as bad as I was expecting. In actual fact, it's quite tasty. I could definitely drink another glass of that. Congratulations, Ivo. You are pregnant. <laughs> 